Okay, welcome back and good to see you, Kojo Busefuye, aka Sir John. Why Sir John? Why are you known as Sir John? Well, um, let me first um, thank your viewers and to say that having been stripped already, um, I came here uh, in my uh, nakedness because <laughs> I've been stripped. Uh, and so it seems to me that um, you, we, we all know who Sir John is. Um, it, it's, um, you know, I remember something. This same question was posed to him, something by his wife, Delilah, uh, to show where his strength is. Samson did that to his, um, you know, uh, 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 it led him to his death. So some of these questions, you know, <laughs> ones... Uh, you, so there's you a answer, story behind Sir John. There's always a story behind the story. Uh -huh. um, but, I've, you know, I, I think I, I was known as Sir John since um, my secondary school days. Uh -huh. Especially in 1973. Where, where was this? Which school where, was where, this? Uh, but when I was in sixth form. Okay. So, so from 1973 to date, I've been known as Sir John. And, uh, you know, I contested elections at uh, Konongo Masi okay. Secondary School, where as a result of some some speech that I delivered, I think that I was I was um, uh, you know uh, awarded this, this 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 name by the students who followed me around, and so I've since been known as Sir John. Okay, and this is the first time the Queen would have um, you know called you a day, uh, you know g giving you a title. Because we're doing you know, a very good job here. And there are several sportsmen and women yeah. here in this country who would have been given yeah. some, some... So uh, what would you knighted. have done so well to be knighted? Yeah. Well, um, I, I love politics. And everything that I've done is, is um, towards that. Mm. But so also have I also contributed a lot in society for the vulnerable. Mm. Um, as a lawyer, I have dealt with several cases pro bono for, you know, the vulnerable in society. And I remember in Ashanti region, if you came to Kumasi, most of the people would call me NPP lawyer. That is to say, when, once they call you NPP lawyer, it means that m most of the cases that are coming to you will suddenly be handled. Sometimes some persons come to you, they don't even have the money to go back. And so you have to dip your hands in your pocket, mm. even to give them the, uh, the, the TNT. Mm. You are invited to attend their funerals. You go there and pay the donation when the person has not even paid any, mm. you know, a fees even okay. for you. So, so is so there a difference we, we, between we, we do Sir John the lawyer and Sir John the politician? I think what you see is what you get. Um, Sir John has always been Sir John. Um, because of my humble upbringing, the beginnings, the village that I come from, I've always, you know, uh, felt that the needy society, the grassroots, ought to be encouraged even to, to rise, you know, and, and because I was given the opportunity to rise even from the village. So I believe that that is what makes, you know, uh, 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 po politics what it is. It is not about the few priv privileged in society. It is about the, the, the vulnerable most of us down there and that those are the people that i appeal to mostly okay and and um you know the, there are some who will say um well they've never seen you in court because of course the court is not a public gallery for everybody to see but they know sir john the uh, the politician very well because they've seen you campaigning uh, sometimes vociferously um the you are known to be a very sharp tongued man does that worry you at any point in time no um, you're you're uh, happy to be described as sharp tongued. Well, I don't know about about that. I don't know what it, what it is meant. One but, way, yeah. But but if it is meant to mean that um, we will respond appropriately, you know, in a, in a manner that jails uh, with the people of this country will do so. Shakespeare says something like, um, "As fire drives out fire, so pity pity." So you use fire to drive out fire. It is not at all times that when somebody comes. With, with a matter, you know, you, you, you go it in a manner that that does not hurt. If, if, if it sometimes, if it's not hurting, it's not working. And I believe in that, in, in, in that philosophy. You don't, you, you, you don't let go. I, I mean, if I, fire I, I, comes, I, you, you have to meet it with fire. No, I do. I do let it go. Do you but, forgive? But, but sometimes, of course, but sometimes what you do is that you do so in a manner. 
that the person would realize that you know he cannot bring with respect to such nonsense in your household look I, I, I have been in the villages where sometimes during the Christmas you have a guy in the house who goes to drink comes home to insult all at the elders in the family sometimes the food that is being cooked you kick it, you know, out, 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 you know, out. And it takes only one day when one of the women will stand up to that bully, slap him here and there. The <laughs> next time that the guy is drunk, he will not come to the house. He will be outside, you know, shouting. You know, can, yes. So sometimes it is important in politics that you don't allow people to treat you, you know, as though you were a nothing. And that is what I do. If, if but even things, people in your party, some people in your party do not subscribe to the way you talk sometimes. Of course, in, of course, in the real world, you know, there are people who may not understand how it is done. But when you take your time to explain the reasons why you did what you did, then they begin to appreciate. Now that I'm no, no longer, you know, employed, as it were, at the political front, now people have come to realize that they would have preferred uh, as a dom to, as it were, tear this incompetent government apart rather than to have, you know, him muted because of the way that he speaks. So most people... But you were there for a long time to tear them apart. But your party, you were never able to win an election for your party. That is the objective of a general secretary, isn't it? So would you say that you failed as a general secretary? No, I think that in our party, if you want one of the successful general secretaries, I will not be, you know, singing my own, you know, hymn or tune as it were, or, 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 or hitting my own drum and dancing. But the reality is this, that the people on the ground, mm -hmm. they love Sir John to bits. They would have loved Sir John to be there. Unfortunately, they didn't vote for you. Unfortunately, no, they did not have the vote. The, the, the very few people who had the vote, the constituency officers, yes. the regional officers, and so on and so forth, they spoke, they spoke eloquently, and I accepted that. Did you but feel that you were against the way you went about things? No, there were several you know, factors. That could, that may be one of those factors. But there were. I believe that Kwabna did a very good campaign. He campaigned, you know, maybe better than I did. And especially if you are, if you have been there, and you have a lot of, you know, mud being thrown out, uh, you know, at you. Um, he is coming from, you know, outside. And so there was very little they have known about him. So all the, you know, masslinging mm -hmm. was against Sir John. But I stood there, I took it on the chin. Were you Sometimes, shocked? Sometimes, you know, hit back. Were you shocked at the number of votes you received at that election? No, not at all. I, I, I would have loved to have won. But it's not what you always want that you get. And so, like I said, Cobran fought a very good fight. In spite of the fact that he had an accident, um, you know, he, he did he did what he, he, he has to do and, and he won the hearts and minds of the people and he won and, and I'm very happy for him. Okay. So does it bother you that you were not able to win an election for your party? No, I did. We, I, I won. I won the elections Which of, election of, did of you 2012. Uh, Ghanaians of all walks of life believe that Nana Kufu won the 2012 elections. That is not what the we court do, said. We do. Of course, we did not agree with the verdict of the court, but we had to you know, accept the finality of, you know, litigation. And we decided not to. Indeed, when the judgments w w w w were published, many were Ghanaians who felt that we ought to have, you know, asked for a review. So, so in effect, I mean, obviously we did all that we, we had to do. We won the elections. Of course, the court did not rule in our favor. But that was not to say that even the NDC, John Dramani Mahama believed that Nana Kufado won the election. Would you I've call yourself a unifier? Oh, I have always been. I've always been. Uh, because, you see, I believe that uh, one tree, you know, doesn't make a forest. And so it takes all of us together to be able to, you know, move and win elections. But let me tell you, I have read the story of the, of the lost sheep in the Bible, in Matthew and the other Gospels. And what Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, has told us is that if you have 100 sheep and then one is lost, you leave the 99, go into the bush and get and find the one that is lost and bring it. But what the Bible did not say is that if you went into the bush and you are not able to trace the one, continue to stay in the bush and let the 99 get lost. So, so yes, what I do is we do all that we can to bring everybody on board. Mm -hmm. but, but if we try and try and try and we are not getting it, 
we are not going to stay in the bush and allow the 99 to go. So we'll come back and take the 99, uh, you know, hold them, send them home uh, uh, safely, rather than to stay in the bush and get the 99. Are you lost. religious? Deeply. Where, where do you fellowship? Um, I'm a seven day Adventist. So, but, so, Sir John, how do we reconcile your asset tank and you being religious? Well, I don't, I don't even know what asset tank means. But if, if it is to, 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 to speak your mind, as I do, I love the word. But you see, the, the point of the matter is this that at a point in time, you know, uh, uh, Jesus had to re even rebuke people. He had to take the whip to, 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 to drive people away because they were making his father's house, you know, so a you're marketplace. A small Jesus. So, no, not at all. I, I, I wish I had the name JJ, with the junior Jesus, but I'm not. I, I'm Sir John. So, unfortunately, I don't But you're a disciple to. then? <laughs> I've always been a disciple of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I believe that sometimes it is good that you tell it, you know, as it is. And you see, I'm not, I'm not a person who, when you err, you know, we would have to even, uh, uh, you know, as it were, paper the cracks. We need to say it as it is from time to time. Of course, not at all times, but from time to time, you need to say. But it. it's the manner you say it. I've never seen anybody who who, who is an errand boy or who, who is aid and want to be rebuked. I've never seen one. And so, whatever manner that you say it. The person suddenly is not going to be happy with how it is put. But I tell you what, if you ask the grassroots of our party, mm. I've been to the markets and so many places. The women out there love Sir John to bits. Because you see, the, the very few intellectuals in the in, in, in the party or in this country who are not happy with the way that Sir John speaks, they, they are not the vulnerable type. I tell you, the people who listen to your programs and the Joy FMs and the others, they, their minds are already made up. They are not the vulnerable type, but we are the, our people, my own people out there in the villages. When so they you hear take advantage of them? No. When they hear something and that they are not happy, you know, they, they, they get worried. Mm -hmm. And so they need somebody who inspires them. And I, I can assure you that if you went out there and, and did the survey, the more people are inspired by the way that I speak than, 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 than being displaced. It's not only the few intellectuals. And I reckon, I, reckon, I, I reckon that the intellectuals, I may not have been able to speak with the findings that they are trained. Of course, they could excuse me because I'm from the village. Because so, people and, call and, you Kofepo Asikrasini. Yes, and I'm very is, happy. Is it a name you like? Oh, I love it. Because, of course, he spoke the truth. Mm -hmm. I am from the village. You know, and, and God has dealt with me, you know, fairly. You, look, I, 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 my, my father died in 1962. Four years after that, my mother died in 66. And I had to weave Kente cloth, go to the farms, even to go and exit for the common entrance in 1968 when I went to secondary school. So from 1968 to 1973, when I left the old levels, I was, at the time that we were school vacated, we had to come home and weave Kente cloth to get more money to go, to go to school. So, so we have not been the privileged types. Mm. So we have worked and, and suffered with our people from the rural areas. In those days, there was no electricity, no, no, with respect, no toilets, nothing whatsoever. And sometimes if you took your mother's lamp, you know, to go and study, your mother would come and take the lamp away from you. Because when you were asked to go and buy kerosene, you refused to go. Mm. And that is where we were. And so it is... It is, it is, it is so you like the title? Born. And the glory is God mm. that we could even come here. The first time I came to Accra in 1976 was when I was coming to the rest of Ghana, Legon. But for that, I would not have even come here. And if you look at Sir John having gone from the rural areas, from the villages, to come and study law with the people who are from here, uh, that, that is the, the, the privileged. privileged class, then it tells you that God has dealt you know, well with us. So I'm very grateful to God. You've actually been blessed. Even, yes, I'm grateful to God. Are you married? Where he's left, left us so far. Say that, are you married? You see, this is something that is a very serious question that people ask. You know, traditionally, our marriage is potentially polygamous in nature. And because I'm, I've come from the rural background, uh, from the village, uh, whatever uh, co contractual relationship I've gone into has been typically polygamous in nature. And so I am. So you don't have one wife. When you say one wife, I don't, I don't understand what it means. But we'll see. I, I don't know whether you want to be English 
Uh, no, those of you who are the, the English types, you talk about one wife and those of us from the villages. So you have more than you have more than one wife. You may have one wife, but but it is essentially polygamous in nature. So Sergeant, what are you saying? What you're saying is that you have a wife but you have other women. Is that what you're saying? I don't know about women. Maybe you may talk about girls or boys, whatever, <laughs> what you want to talk about. But you see, we, we, we are not talking about women. I don't know. What is the definition of a woman? Like me. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sergeant, you don't have one wife. That's what you're saying. No, no. Um, see, Sergeant, are you married? Um, I, I have taken a wife. I took a wife. Um, and I remember that's what Prince Charles said. When he was asked whether he, he, he had married or not, he said, I took a wife. Mm -hmm. And I think I love that, 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 that description. So you have taken marrying, a Marrying and taking a wife, I think that uh, well, okay. what, what, what was the difference? See, <laughs> when you grow, well, well, you are a young woman, you have not grown <laughs> up yet. When you grow like I am, you see, it, it is always dangerous not to be with somebody in your latter years. Because, you see, most people who die are the people who sleep alone. So, when you get to my age, you don't want to sleep alone in case, you know, you are caught. So, you have a some... convenient partner. What is the definition? Well, you said you, because you don't want to die alone. And you don't want to die early. <laughs> so, you need... No, not die alone. Uh -huh. die, 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 die alone. Die early. But, but you see... There so are some... You don't want to live alone. No, no let me tell you something. Uh -huh. Sometimes, if you are ill, and you have somebody sleeping by you, the person could even shout for for help. The person can even you know wake you yeah. up so that you don't you don't fall into all these things. So when you get to a certain age, you need to have. So you are at that uh, age you know, now. So oh, you yes. have somebody. I'm a, I'm too old. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm an old man. So you so have somebody now. Or no, some, no, some ladies. Here I don't. In Accra, you don't have in Accra. You see, but for a village boy. Okay. Who loves an old man like Sir John? So you have in your village, or no? Ono, yes. Um, Ono, Ono is a very beautiful village uh, where I would have loved to marry from Ono. Unfortunately, you know, when you are a young man, you don't have money, and the girls, you know, doesn't, you know, want to marry you because you don't have money. So we were not able to get one from there. But it is important, every young man, the advice I'll give you is that even if you are not married in your hometown, get a child there. It is important. Sir John, thank you very much for your time here this morning. <laughs> thank you.